sincerely appreciated one of you for this prayer watch. And uh, I bring you greetings from Nigeria in the city of Port Harcourt, where I live. And uh, it's a great time this morning as we get into God's word. Praise God. I want Hallelujah. us to pray, you know, pray but permit me to pray one more time so that we can get into God's word. Father, thank you for the great privilege, great opportunity to come before God's people at this hour to bring God's word. I pray, Lord, that as we share briefly from your word, that you will impart our spirit. Let Amen. something happen that will make us understand the exigency and the need of the hour. Thank Amen. you, Abba. Let your word Thank come you. free and let that be expression so, so that mm -hmm. somebody can connect onto this word for us to pray and pray properly this morning. Be thou mm -hmm. exalted and praise Thank in Jesus' you, precious name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I want to sincerely appreciate you one more time, Pastor Light and his team. Uh, and I know that the team the, for this sharing this morning, as it is in the book of Psalms, Psalm 22, verse 27, that all mm -hmm. earth shall come to the knowledge of the Lord. You know, it said that all the ends of the world shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the, of the nations shall worship before God. This is a, a very pertinent scripture. But I, I, I decided this morning to share with us from what I titled the urgency of the earth. And mm. if you look at your Bible in John chapter 4, I know you may have preached from it, and every one of us in this course of prayers, we may have referred to it at various times. When Jesus was passing by, uh, you know, with the disciples and returning to, to you know, to, to, uh, to passing through Samaria, and he got to a city that is uh, very pertinent and saw things that made him receive a burden and a passion. I want to quickly go to that passage in John chapter four so that we can easily appreciate uh, what I'm going to be sharing this morning. He said, as he was passing by, you know, he saw this very thing that was there to him that made him receive a burden for transformation, a body for transformation. In John chapter four, let me quickly bring up that passage. I know you are preached it, but then let's again look at it briefly. As he get to this very place, tired and worn out, he sent his disciples away to go and get food. As they left to go and get food, a woman of Samaria came to the well. And when that woman came to the well with such a burden and such a passion to collect, not knowing that it was a season, it was an urgent time, it was a chiral visitation. He didn't have understanding of this until what she desired to happen happened to her. Okay, the Bible made us understand. So Jesus left with them at the countryside and went by the side of Galilee, okay, to get there. He, she had to pass through Samaria. It came to Sika, a Samaritan village, and bordered the field, you know, what the field of Jacob had given, you know, his son Joseph and what's the rest. And a woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said, Would you give a drink of water? You know the story. And the, the episode led to the woman, you know, Jesus asking, Where is your husband? And she said, I have no husband. And Jesus descended and said, yes, it's true, you don't have a husband, but you have lived with five, and the one you're living with now is not even your husband. The woman said, wow, you must be, you must be a prophet. You must have something that I needed. And Jesus said, give me, you know, if you, if you, if you can give me your own water, I'm going to give you a living water that will make you not to test anymore. It was that encounter that made the woman leave everything she was doing and became a evangelist. She ran to the city, come and see a man that told me everything, everything about me. She must be the Messiah. Because Jesus said, the person talking to you is the Messiah. It's not the time to go to Jerusalem to worship or go to this place to worship. Time has come when the true worshipers of God must worship him in spirit and in truth. But that led to Jesus saying something. When the disciples returned and saw him talking with a woman, which they didn't understand, and why he was not asking for food again. And Jesus, looking at them, said something that is important. He said, let me read it to us in that John chapter 4, 
Okay, Jesus in verse 35. As you look around right now, would you not see the you know see that about four months it will be time for harvest? Well, I am telling you to open your eyes and take a good look at what was right in front of you. This Samaritan field are ripe and are ready right harvest time, harvest time. The harvester isn't willing, but he said, I have food. He said, come back if he said, I have food, I have nourishment, which is what I have taken. Okay, I have food to do, to eat, which you don't know of. Nourishment, which you don't know of. What is that nourishment? That she had the opportunity to witness to this amount. Woman. Beloved, most important thing for us to know is that the time has never before. It is for you also to get to where the souls are, not staying in our churches for entertainment. The church has become a place of entertainment. We entertain ourselves, we enjoy ourselves, but the sinners are out there in the streets roaming about and nobody reaching to them. The time has come. Jesus said, I have food to eat, which you know not of. And what is that food? To win souls, to do the will of my father and to finish it. The delay we have kept on, the delay of the system has made to so much decay. Decay all over the world today, the Muslim insurgents, the, 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 the new age movement, the, the, the gay marriage and all things, the family has been destroyed simply because of delay. The delay has led to decay. And if we don't make haste, the harvest will waste. Can I tell you the truth? We are praying that the harvest will come in. But Jesus himself in Luke chapter 10 said, the harvest is plentiful for the laborers are praying the Lord of the harvest. In Matthew chapter 9, the same thing. Pray the Lord of the harvest. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are not there. The laborers have become insensitive. We are not passionate to do what we are supposed to do. And where there's no passion, there's no action. We are just in our, in our own circles of influence, entertaining ourselves. You know, learning principles of this, principles of this. But souls are perishing. Jesus mm -hmm. said, I have meat which I right. eat, which you don't know of. That means yes, is to put the will of him that sent me and to finish it. Beloved, we are here to live for a purpose. And as we go into prayer this morning, I want you to be passionate. If we don't make haste, the harvest is wasting. The harvest is wasting. Men, families have become a, 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 a non shagland thing. Every family is on its own. But if the family spoils, the society spoils, the church spoils. And so the evening, the, the in thing, this woman has lived with five men cohabiting with them. And the one he's living with now is not even the husband. And that's the family. The family is made up of the man and the woman, not the man and the man. The man and the woman with or without foster children or spiritual children, biological foster or spiritual children. When this is not he had next. Mm -hmm. When the family is not built up, when the family is not established, what are we talking about? The world is in decay. The society is in decay. And everything we are doing today is moving around the vicious circle. The Bible says, train up a child in the way you go, that when he grows up, he will depart from it. We, but we have children today who are on their own, who have never known anything about church, who have never known anything about Jesus who are just there facing the ICT world and getting themselves entertained and living a life that has nothing to do with God. In this Samaritan story, you would have known that this woman has lived with five men. That would have been a family, husband and wife. But not no marriage has taken place. It's, there's no covenant. Marriage is a covenant. Thing. There's no covenant established among husband and wife. And so, when he lives, maybe, what have you been doing? If a man and a woman is sleeping together all the time and you don't have pre you know, pre preventive measures, that's bound to be children, which means the woman may be committing abortion, burying the womb with the children in her womb and nothing to do about it. I was there in the, in the, in the country, in a country of uh, Australia, and a friend of mine with his wife was taking me to a city in Kangolia, from Perth to Kangolia. 
and as we are beginning to discuss, I, should, I, sh I share with this, he's an evangelist, I said, stopped over, I said, hi guy, you know, what about your children? He said, no, 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 when we got married, we, 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 you know, my wife removed her womb, we don't want to have children, we just want to serve the Lord and preach the gospel all over the world. I told him simply, I said, hey, Jen, you are in error. How could you live with your wife and your wife will remove her womb and you want to preach the gospel? Which gospel are you preaching? And that brought a, a quarrel with all, you know, a, a quarrel in the car. And uh, I discovered the, that they felt so shield because the Bible, they are walking against the Bible. I showed them increase and multiply, replenish the earth. But here come a man and a woman married in the church, wedded in the church, and the wife removed her womb because they want to do God's work. Which God's work are you doing? Increase and multiply is not in their world. They said we want to preach the gospel. And so we don't want children, we don't want this passion. That's an error. Beloved, the family is in trouble. We have so many or such things today and going on and nobody cares. So this morning, we're going to cry to the Lord. That woman discovered that she was in error. She went to the city, come and see the man who told me everything about me. She must be the Messiah. And when the people came and sought and heard from Jesus, they believed that they even pleaded with him and said, Sir, stay with us a few more days, which Jesus have obliged. Beloved, I am here this morning to tell you that the global harvest is wasted. The global harvest is wasted because men who ought to speak the truth are not speaking the truth. Men who ought to level for the purpose for which we are here on earth are not involved in it. We are simply delaying and the decay is going on. We are simply wasting time and the, 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 the time we are wasting has led to the harvest wasted. If we don't make this, the harvest will waste globally. And I tell us the truth, this is a call for you and I to resolve and come to the Lord and cry out to the Lord and say, Lord, revive your church one more time. As the church is revived, the family will revive. Let's go back to the basis. God spoke to Abraham. He said, I know my servant Abraham, for he will command his household. Beloved, we need to go back to our house. We need to return back to the family. The righteous Christ, I'm standing before saying, the righteous Christ, and no man listen to her. It is time for us to learn to the heart that the, our families are in trouble. It is time for us to go back, the, the husbandman not running all over. I was there some time ago, you know, Benny Hinn, you know, wrote me a, a 15 page letter. He said to me, I turn, I was wrong. I said, what does that mean? I began reading the beginning letter he wrote to me. And I saw and said, I got it wrong. I went into, into preaching the gospel all over the world and neglected my family. It made my wife Susan to go into drugs. It made my son Joshua to begin to do a different thing. But it took God for me to understand it right. Today, I have realized it is my God and myself, then my family before the kingdom work. My God and myself, my family, then the ministry. But initially looked at my God and myself, the ministry before family. Beloved, we need to be ordered it again. We need to go back to our family. We need to cry out to, uh, to the Lord that we be able to establish a kingdom that begins with the family. When the family is right, the society will be right. When the family is right, the church will be right. The church is made up of families. So, beloved, the fourth prayer point we need to pray is that the Lord open our eyes that we may see what to do to connect ourselves back. All the man and his wife will come to the knowledge of the Lord. And not only that, the children, we need to train our children to buy into a transformation that is based on looking at the father and the mother so that our days will be long. The Bible says, obey your father and your mother that your days will be long. If we have seen children today, everybody in the home is putting something on his ear. In, uh, to communicate in families today, you use internet and you are still staying under the same roof, under the same, under the same roof. That is an error. We need to go back. 
we need to go back to the rudiments of training our children to buy into what we stand for. That's transformational leadership. Transformational leadership has four components at their life influence. We need to replace our children to buy into voluntarily, not by coercing. Buy into the God we serve, serving the God we serve. Number two, idealize support. We need to get to the, our children to encourage them, to support them, to know what they are going through, to know the pay pressure they are going through, and see how we can assist them to tell them we were once there. And now you are connecting to this, we help you to become what God wants you to be. Number three, it requires not just idealizing place, idealizing support, intellectual stimulation. Our children are in a jet age. We are talking of ICT age. We don't need to fold our hands and say it is their own time. What time? Their own time to go into wickedness. Their own time to use the internet as a place of immorality. Their own time of going into all manner of things going on today. No, we need to get involved in what they are doing and know exactly how we can use that platform to assist them. We don't need to be analog, okay? Then that's intellectual stimulation. We need to have inspirational motivation. So our children need to buy into what we are and believe what we believe so that there shall be a transformation. Paul looked at Timothy and said, that which you have learned from me, among many witnesses, the same, the same, communicate to others, communicate the same, so that there will be continuity. That is transformation that has to do with four generational transfer. Beloved, we may be the first born again in our families or the first generation of Christians in our homes. Our grandparents may not, grandparents may not have served the Lord. So it is our opportunity to transfer what we have to our children. And our children will grow up and not depart from it. And they will transfer it to their own children. Some of us are becoming grandfathers and grandmothers, but our children have nothing to do with church. But if you look at our four parents, you know, in U.S. and other places, look at the Kenyan family. You see, up to eight generations are serving the Lord. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. We need to have, make our children believe what we believe. It starts from the family. If we get it right in the family and there's no decay in the family, this family system will be the world we are talking about that we bow to Jesus, cannot bow to him if the family is not right. So we need to go to the foundation. And if the foundation be fault, what will the righteous do? So this is what God will have us do this morning. What am I saying? Beloved, I told us here, the harvest is decaying because we have delayed. If we don't make haste, the harvest will waste. If we refuse to be, if we become casual in the issue of soul winning, in this issue of evangelism, and we are centered in the church, and we are just entertaining ourselves and not meeting sinners where they are, going to them where they are, leaving our comfort zones to be instrument of witnesses unto them and drag as many that we come in into the kingdom. If we don't do that, if we don't do that, the harvest will decay. And I tell us the truth, the casualness we have today have led to so many casualties. I come from Get, uh, you know, a, a mistake I made in the, in the past when I had opportunity. Opportunity is God's invitation to manifest what is in you. And I missed opportunity. I entered into a vow to the Lord. I said, if I am alive with, in my mortal body and I have opportunity, I do only but one thing. I dive in. I don't miss opportunity. If I miss opportunity, it means that I have gone to the grave. Beloved, opportunity is God's invitation. This morning, God is inviting every one of us to open our eyes of understanding, to see that we need to leave our comfort zone, to meet the sinners where they are, whether in, in, in Australia or in Europe or in America or in, in Southern America or in, in African countries or African continent or in Asia, anywhere you are, you need to make Jesus this main thing, preaching him as a witness unto the entire world. The Bible said in Matthew 24, verse 14, on this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. The world is preached. Not that we win, we convert all of them. The world must be preached. That men will see and bow. On this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. Then the end will come. The end will not come until the gospel is preached. And we must use every facility that God is giving to the church in this season to explore 
bring, bring in the gap, bring them in, bring them up, bring people in, fill them up, train them, and send them out. And as we send them, the going church will be involved, the keeping church will be involved, and the growing church will be involved. Global Harvest Prayer Network is one of the growing, 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 the growing aspect of the going church. And as we get involved in prayer, which is the most important thing, praying for the harvest. As we begin to pray, as we begin to grow, God in his mercy will be giving opportunities. God in his mercy will opening doors. God in his mercy will be quickening. God will give mercy will be giving us strategies. God in his mercy will be opening our understanding. How best to reach people to the kingdom and how best to bring them to the kingdom. Until this gospel of the kingdom is preached in all the world, the end will not come. So, beloved, I want us first and foremost to go ahead and begin to thank the Lord as we get into prayers in the next 30 minutes. I want us first and foremost to go before the Lord and begin to thank him. Thank the Lord that he has recruited him. Thank the Lord because you are one of those laborers. Thank the Lord that your God has selected you to be one of those that will stand in the gap that he will not destroy the entire world. Ezekiel 22 verse 30. Let's go ahead and begin to thank the Lord. Thank you, Abba Father, for opportunity this morning to come before you with God's word. Thank you, Abba Father, that we have been recruited as laborers. Begin to pray wherever you are. Go ahead now. Limbrina <laughs> Limbande kata kondo zete lena do sumata zone kapata. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus for the privilege to be called of you. For the privilege to be called of you. Man, the sword to stand in the gap, to stand in the gap, to save the world. Zatana Baba Badaziatush, Legada Banagada Banagadush, that we are mm. still alive today, hearing the things we are hearing, still alive today, bearing witness. Let's thank the Lord. I say, Papa, we thank you that we are alive, that we are not yet consumed. Thank you because the, 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 the knowledge of the Lord will cover the heavens and the earth as the water covers the sea. Shall we pray mm. and thank the Lord one more time? Thank him and bless his name. Thank Let's you, pray Jesus. Let's pray in the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to be involved in the Gospel of the Kingdom. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Embrenagadi <laughs> 
Mandele Proto, Zumbande Nahata. Father, in the name of Jesus, this calling shall not be wasted. This calling shall not be wasted. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will fulfill the purpose, O Lord, for which you've called me to this assignment. This purpose must be realized. In the name of Jesus, this purpose must be realized. This global harvest mandate, O God, must come to reality. Your plan, O God, in this global harvest must come to reality. This global harvest mandate must come to fruition, must come to fruition in the name of Jesus. Lord, Lord, have your way, have your way, have your way against all odds, against all the devices of the enemy. This mandate must come to reality in the mighty name of Jesus. Let all men be liar and let God be true. Let all men be liar and let God be true in the name of Jesus Christ. Let there be a mobilization of the army. Mobilization of the army. Oh, my father, mobilize everything within me. Mobilize everything within them. Mobilize everything within every man, within every woman, Lord, on this platform, O Jehovah, set them on fire, Lord. Set every man on fire. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, 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 Lord
Mighty God, let there be the outpouring of your fire, the outpouring of your grace, the outpouring of your anointing, the outpouring of your anointing, the outpouring of your fire, the outpouring of your power, the outpouring of your anointing, the outpouring of your power. In the name of Jesus Christ, the outpouring of your anointing and your fire, the outpouring of your anointing and your fire for the gospel, the outpouring of your anointing for the gospel, the outpouring of your anointing for the gospel, the outpouring of your anointing for your gospel. Oh my God, against all odds, against all the devices of the enemy, against all the subtlety of the enemy, against all the devices of the enemy, and for of your gospel to move forward. Let your gospel move forward in Europe. Let your gospel move forward in Asia. Let the gospel move forward Lord, in all of Australia. Let your gospel move forward in all of North and South America. Let the gospel move forward, O Lord, in Africa. Let the gospel move forward, O Lord, in Nigeria. Let the gospel move forward, Lord, in South Africa. Let the gospel move forward in my life. Let the gospel move forward in my life in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the gospel move in my life in the name of Jesus. Oh God, set me on fire for you. Set me on fire for you. Set me on fire for you. Set me on fire for you to do your will, oh God. For this purpose I was sent. For this purpose I was born. For this purpose I came. For this purpose I came. To be the light of nations. As light of nations. As light of nations. To be a light of nations. For this purpose you come. Me. For yeah, this yeah, purpose, you yeah, called me yeah, to yeah, shine yeah, in the midst of yeah, darkness, yeah, to shine yeah, in the midst yeah, of yeah, darkness, yeah, to frustrate yeah, the tokens yeah, of the yeah, liars, yeah, to frustrate yeah, the tokens yeah, of yeah, liars, yeah, to frustrate yeah, the tokens yeah, of yeah, liars, yeah, to frustrate yeah, the tokens yeah, of yeah, liars. This purpose I was called for. This purpose I was called for. Your light shine. Let your light shine. Let your light shine. Let the nations hear you. Let the nations hear you. Jesus, <laughs> Hallelujah. In John chapter 1, you know the episode of how Jesus recruited Nathaniel. 
Mm. The Bible said that Andrew found and he went to call his friend Nathaniel and told him there's a man who has, uh, you know, who must be the Messiah. Nathaniel said, Is there anything good coming from Nazareth? He said, Let us go. As soon as they appeared before Jesus, Jesus said, Ah, an Israelite indeed, in mm. whom there is no integrity, in whom there is no God. Nathaniel said, Wow, how do you know me? Mm. If we are the day. When we should demonstrate word of knowledge, it helps the evangelism to become easy. Word mm. of knowledge and power event, power ministry, power gifting, demonstration gifts. It makes the word of God easy. When men praise the cripple, cause the cripple to walk, the blind to see. Jesus said, Go and tell John, these are the evidence following me. If these evidence are correct, then I must be the Messiah. Beloved, the word of God has come, become so watered down that we preach it today without power following it. Every one of us should go back to our closet for a fresh baptism, a fresh baptism of power. But let me go forward. The next prayer point which we must begin to pray is Lord Ezekiel 22, I sought for a man. I sought for a man. Luke chapter 10, verse 2. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest that he may send laborers. Beloved, laborers are needed more than ever. Men who will stand in the gap and say, Father, as long as I'm here, I recall in my days when I came into the city where I still live to today, I am now, this is no room of Jesus is in town. That became my a slogan for evangelism, doing crusade all over the city of Otago. Jesus is in town. It is not a rumor. Jesus hmm. is in town. I get into the closet and I say, Lord, baptize me with fire. Men will wash me born. Signs and wonders taking place. And these are churches established today. When men's faith are established in the power of God, they cannot but abide. And you make the place where you are greenish, they lie down on green pastures. I want us to pray again. Lord, as long as I live, grant me the, the quickening that will make me stand in the gap. Stand in the gap that when you look around you and you want to destroy you, will see me. Oh God, do something again, something new. Start something new with me. Take me out from my comfort zone and let me be the answer to that that trouble your people. Can you go ahead and pray that prayer point for yourself? I want to hear you pray. I want to hear you pray. We are in a prayer. Thank, you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Make me an answer. The things that are Lemprina <laughs> <laughs> 
In the name of Jesus. Amen. Again, we are still praying. The scripture says, you know, in Isaiah chapter 49, verse 24 to 26, shall a lawful captive be delivered? And the problem is terrible, says, we said yes. A lawful captive shall be delivered, and the problem is terrible, shall be sent me. When God, and when I arise to contend with them, that contend with us. And we cause your enemies to eat their flesh as food and to drink their blood as wine. That you may know you are servants of Jacob. I want us to pray. The whole world has been enslaved. From the time of Adam and Eve, the whole world has been enslaved. All right? And that was why Satan made the boast. All these things have been given unto me. You bow down to me and and they take it and you'll be free. That was set and boasting to Jesus. I want us to pray. Even, oh God, arise. Isaiah said, Tear the heavens and come down. Oh mm. God, arise. Arise as in the days of old. That the captives that are held with immorality, captives that are held with corruption, captives that are held with insurgents, captives that are held will be delivered. Oh God, arise. That the souls of men will be saved. The Bible said it's not the will of God that any should perish, but that all shall come to the knowledge of the Lord. Shall we go ahead and raise a battle cry? Oh God, arise. Arise in the nations. Arise in the nations. Let your light shine. In, in the, the name nations. of Jesus. Oh God, let your light shine in the nations. Let your light shine in the nations. Oh God, let your light shine in the nations. Let's go ahead and In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your light in me shine. Let your light shine across the nations. In the name of Jesus. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, my life shall not go out, my life shall not be put off, in the name of Jesus, your life shall not be put off, oh God, but it shall shine brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter, oh my God, I call the nations, in the name of Jesus, my soul, in the name of Jesus, Lord God of heaven, as for fresh oil, fresh oil that will make your fire burn the more. Oil for more fire, fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil, oh God. Fresh oil to burn your light, to shine your light. Fresh oil to shine your light. Oil to shine your light. Fresh oil to shine your light. Against all cops, against all cops, against the divine enemy. Fresh oil, fresh oil. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, sharpen my sword. Sharpen the sword of your servants and call the nations. Sharpen the sword of your servants. Sharpen the sword of your servants. Sharpen the sword of your servants, sharp fishing instruments. Make your servants, oh my God, sharp fishing instruments, sharp fishing instruments, sharp fishing instruments in the name of Jesus Christ. To come through hearts, to come through mountains, to come through kingdoms of Satan, to come through the courts. In the name of Jesus, oh my God, lay bandos. you will notice in our chapter 8, in our mm. chapter 8, the whole city of Samaria was under siege until Philip yes. the evangelist came there. And when Philip came and preached the word of God with authority and power, the Bible declared that the whole city was turned upside down. The mm. man that held the land in captivity and in siege, the, you know, the bad Jesus, saw that his own merchandise was in jeopardy. He even joined the company of Philip, but until Peter and John came. When Peter and John came and began to minister to them again to receive a good box, what was in by Jesus manifested? Hmm. The man quickly brought money and began to give to Peter, say, give me this type of gift that anybody I lay my hands, he wants to move to the next level of courtesy. And Peter looked at him standing and said, your money perish with him, for you cannot buy the gift of God with money. He rebuked him, for I see in you a heart of wickedness. Repent or something will happen to you. Beloved, mm. we are entering into the season of display. 
There are mm. people that held cities and nations on siege. My Let God. Break, 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 break. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That have said that we for the wicked. Oh God, let those arms for the wicked to work. Shall we go ahead and pray that prayer? Zona Zientre Bando, Zonanda Yahatu. No, 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 the first Jesus, I break your shackles. I break your stronghold. I break your stronghold. In the name of Jesus, I come with fresh mantle from heaven. I come with fresh oil 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 from heaven. Lord of heaven. We tap into the new oil. We tap into the new oil. We enter into new covenant with you. We enter into new covenant with you. In the name of Jesus, we draw new sword. We draw new sword. We draw new sword. We draw new sword. Defy the plans of the enemy. Defy the agenda of the enemy. To defy the agenda of the enemy. To humiliate the agents of the enemy. To humiliate the agents of darkness. To the plans of the wicked man. To shatter the agenda of the Lord. From 34 verse 17 said the righteous Christ and the Lord Yahweh. I want us now to localize our prayers to the families. There are powers that have had some families in the siege. I went to family deliverance in a flat or in a city in Nigeria. And I went to this family, and one person in the family said, Nobody in the family, an artist, will be passing. Anybody that rises up like a shiny star before you know it, one accident, one problem will come up, one sickness will come up, and the person will die. He's just one year old. And no other person in the entire place is rising up. When we finish our prayers, we came to about to let be, and dealt with that wicked occultic power. We left that place by 5 30 a.m. back to Portaco. By 9 30, that man dropped dead. Am I the one that killed him? No. We only weighed him in his spiritual balance. And said, You who said nobody will pass you, your wickedness has your cup is filled. The God who judges wickedness, who said the wickedness of the wicked shall return to the wicked, shall come upon you. And we dealt with it, and that morning, that midnight, as we finished by in the morning, the man dropped dead and died. I'm not the one mm. that did it. We only pray prayers we know how to do best. And God, who judges wickedness, judges them. I want us to rise up. Whoever in our families that have risen to be a cloud of darkness, and that nobody, that the light of God will not shine on families. Oh, God, arise. And let such persons be pulled back. 
Psalm 25 said, I am the Lord that is in your I am also the Lord that will put me in now. Shall we go ahead and pray that prayer? That may be second time last year. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. Recover your Mother family. So Whoever in our family mm. that said you will be the, the covering of darkness, the covering of darkness. As I have 25 said, every covering of darkness on this altar shall consume, consume by fire. Let's go ahead and say, Father, every covering of darkness in our families that have brought the black side, that have mm. brought offering that the light of God will not shine our family. Oh God, let them break us. Let our family let them break us. 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 Let
In Jesus' mm. mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 God bless you. Wow. Wow. My bishop.